topic under discussion today is uh, peptic ulcer now this topic is going to be made very easy how like just concentrate first of all i'll tell you ulcer we'll go from the very basics to advanced okay that's why the topic is going to be made very easy first of all we'll talk about the ulcer then we'll talk about the peptic ulcer then i will switch towards gastric ulcer duodenal ulcer we'll explain then I will tell you people about the etiology and pathophysiology of the peptic ulcer. Then I will make you people understand how the pH is maintained in the stomach. Then we will know about the clinical presentation of the peptic ulcer. Then diagnosis. Then pharmacotherapy. Now this pharmacotherapy will be in sense of triple therapy and quadruple therapy. In short, here we will discuss the drugs used to treat peptic ulcer. Let's get started from the very first point. Ulcer. What is ulcer? Very simple. Erosion of the protective layer, any protective layer, anywhere, if it's removed, that is actually known as ulcer. Simple ulcer. What is ulcer? Any protective layer, if that is removed, is named as ulcer. Now, what is peptic ulcer? Very simple. Peptic is actually a collective term used for two regions. Number one, uh, gastric region number two duodenal region now both these two gastric and duodenal regions they are collectively called as peptic region okay peptic region now this is the peptic region so now from this region from the gastric and duodenal regions from these regions if 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 the mucosa now this is the protective layer okay if this mucosa is removed from the gastric and duodenal region is named as peptic cancer very simple here we have mucosa in the gastric region and here is the small intestine duodenum the very first part of the small intestine so now if from these two parts the protective layer is removed that is mucosa if this is removed then this is named as peptic ulcer very simple so now if just from the gastric region this peptic layer is removed then that is named as gastric ulcer and if only from the duodenal region the mucosa is removed then that is named is duodenal ulcer i hope you got ulcer peptic ulcer gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer if not rewind the video coming to the next point now this is just a kind of english terminology definition that is a discontinuity in the entire thickness of the duodenal or gastric mucosa is actually known as peptic ulcer you can write any definition this or whatever i spoke you can write those in the words on your notebook paper page in practical exams anywhere that will be your exact to the point definitions of the peptic ulcer gastric ulcer duodenal ulcer and simply ulcer hope you got all well if still you have confusion drop in the comment box i'm here to help you guys we'll tell you all inshallah if possible and if that was under our approach coming to the next point now what is etiology and pathophysiology of the gastric duodenal in short peptic ulcer well these are the common reasons like if mucus is decreased and acid is increased h pylori and ansids use of ansids okay now all these are actually responsible to cause peptic ulcer whether it is gastric or duodenal okay so these are the main factors the main reasons responsible to cause ulcer so from by all these means what is going to happen now very simple from the gastric region and duodenal region there will be the removal of the mucosa if mucosa is removed then the ulcer is created so that is named as an gastric ulcer or duodenal ulcer or peptic ulcer in short okay so if it is only removed from the gastric the mucosa if is only removed from the gastric region that is gastric ulcer if it is only removed from the duodenal region that is called duodenal ulcer so this is all about okay what peptic ulcer duodenal ulcer their etiology in short pathophysiology and we have explained certain mechanisms of the ansards etc that have they are responsible to decrease mucus secretion etc etc so in short we have explained in other videos also if you have some other complications well so this was in short about the etiology and pathophysiology of the peptic ulcer now let's come towards the uh, next point that is how the ph is maintained in the gastric region very simple uh, we know uh, here uh, the stomach this portion of the stomach is named as fundus this is the body and this is the antrum 
Now for uh, the pH maintenance, remember these cells, G cell, D cell, P cell. Now these are the specific cells responsible to maintain pH. How like, very simple. If the pH in the stomach increases, we know we have seven as a neutral. If it is increasing upward, moving upward towards 14, this is called an increase in the pH. And if it is decreasing downward towards one, this is known as decrease in the pH, okay? So if the pH is increasing, so we call it as uh, the pH is becoming alkaline and that is not sufficient, not good for the gastric region, for the stomach. What will happen? These G cells are stimulated, which are present in the antrum. These G cells will release gastrin. This gastrin is responsible to release enterochromaffin-like cells. G cells will be released, uh, stimulated, sorry. Increasing pH will stimulate the G cells. Now these G cells are responsible to release gastrin. That gastrin is then responsible to stimulate enterochromaffin like cells. Then those cells are responsible to release histamine. And then those histamines are responsible to stimulate parietal cells. And we know about the parietal cells, they are responsible to release HCl. So like this, increased in pH stimulated G cells which released gastrin then they stimulated enterochromaffin like cells ECL, which re uh, released histamine, which was then further responsible to stimulate parietal cells. At the end, HCl was released by the parietal cells. So if the HCl is released here, what will happen to the pH? pH will move down. So now, in order to maintain a specific level, here we get the D cells. If the pH is becoming down, a point will come where D cells will be stimulated then those D cells, when they are stimulated, they are responsible to release somatostatins. Now, those somatostatins are responsible to inhibit G cells, ECL and parietal cells. G cells, ECL and parietal cells. These three cells will be inhibited. So, if these are inhibited, what, what will happen? From the G cells, there won't be any release of gastrin. From the ECL, there won't be the release of histamine. From the P cells, there won't be the release of the HCL. So, in short, what will happen? The pH will not drop anymore it will be maintained up to a certain limit so this is how pH is maintained or one can say the homeostasis of the pH in the stomach by P cells G cells ECL and D cells that's how okay hope you got next here we have clinical presentation of the peptic ulcer so in peptic ulcer we have gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer okay we have discussed all these in detail now it is an overview so what will happen in the clinical presentation normally as a whole in nutshell we the, the patient will present uh, epigastric pain. Epigastric pain will be observed in the clinical presentation. Now, this epigastric pain will be in some patients uh, due to taking food, and some patients this epigastric pain will be uh, due to uh, taking no food. Now, how like very simple. One person, one patient will come that as I take the food, I feel the pain. Another will come that as I take the food my pain subsides two specific uh, situations are actually created here by one is taking the food uh, is complaining that as i take the food i feel the pain another is taking the food the pain is subsided okay two conditions now these two are actually representing two types of ulcers gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer for further queries drop in the comment box or go for our other videos regarding ulcer next we have diagnosis there are certain uh, methods available to diagnose whether uh, there is H. pylori, peptic ulcer or any other. So for that we have, uh, in a nutshell, we have diagnostic tools like uh, methods. Number one, we will go for endoscopy. We have endoscopy is the very best one. Serum antigen test. Then we have fecal antigen test. Then we have rapid ureus test. So these are in, sure, in short those methods which are actually uh, opted to identify, to diagnose ulcer. Okay. Then we have uh, pharmacotherapy used to treat uh, mainly H. pylori. So we have actually uh, two types of therapy. One is triple therapy, another one is quadruple therapy. In triple therapy, we have uh, two antibiotics, one PPI. One PPI and two antibiotics. PPI, proton pump inhibitor. So if you give PPIs, there won't be acid secretion. So now there are actually two very basic uh, uh, targets that must be kept in mind while treating H. pylori patient regarding ulcer. So in H. pylori, we have bacteria. For that, we will use antibiotics. And along with that, here is acid secretion. We are supposed to decrease the acid secretion. For that, we will give PPIs, inhibitors, okay? So if we inhibit PPI, 
acid secretion will be reduced and if you give antibiotics the h pylori available here that will be actually eradicated so for h pylori eradication we have two antibiotics number one we have clarithromycin number two we have amoxicillin and along with that we have one ppi okay so these three are actually responsible to be placed in triple therapy and they will help out eradicate what h pylori so in the next case we have quadruple therapy if triple therapy is actually failed then we'll move towards quadruple therapy in quadruple therapy we have uh, one more thing that is mucoprotective agent that is bismuth subsalicylate and along with that we are introducing uh, the indicating ppis bismuth subsalicylate ppis and two antibiotics so in that one we have one is uh, metronidazole another one is tetracycline these are actually indicated okay now one case in triple therapy is that if uh, sometime uh, our patients are actually in the they are uh, complaining of allergy so if the patient is allergic if you know what that regarding uh, penicillins so then we will not give amoxicillin uh, instead amoxicillin we will indicate metronidazole so these were in short the points regarding peptic ulcer if still you have confusion drop in the comment box this was actually an overview hope you got it. thank you for watching